lives together Working hand in hand Good to see your brother Take a stronger stand Crossing paths together On that day we're sure to stand Welcome, welcome, welcome ladies and gentlemen to Crossing Paths Television Ministry and we're so thankful for you for turning it, tuning in here today and we are on Cornerstone Television out of Wall, Pennsylvania, a fantastic ministry out there and they share it all over the country, wherever they're at, them wonderful people down there and uh, we just want you to watch us every Wednesday uh, at 5.30 and as well as the other programs on uh, Cornerstone Television. You know, last week I hope you enjoyed our, our tour to Israel I've been there 12 times, and my wife and I went again, and we took our, uh, our TV men there this time. Did you enjoy that, by the way, you two? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're behind the cameras, but they enjoyed it. We had a good time, and we'll probably be going back again in November. I said four times I wasn't going to go back, but I just can't quit. But anyway, that's what it is here. And crossing paths, and I crossed paths with a young one here today. It's a second young one the, on our series here. About of, They love it whenever people are absolutely young, willing to go to share their testimony. And today I have a man by Josh Deshmond, and he's from uh, down around uh, Beaver Falls, PA, am I right? Yeah, that's it. And you attend a church with Christian Assembly, right? Mm -hmm. With your pastor here, and he's here today, and so uh, it's exciting to have you, and I appreciate it. And again, I like it to see you. You're 20 years old? Yes. Oh, and single? Yes, I am. Oh, boy. Okay, we want to hear the story about the single men. Now, you know, uh, us adults, okay? All the time are coming into problems in our lives, and our, uh, the youth today are really being bombarded. Tell me about your past. Uh, like from the very beginning? Yes, yeah, from the, when like you from were, the very beginning. Where you were born and raised at, and how you become a Christian. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I have always been around Beer Falls, PA. I moved out here when I was like three years old, and I've always been a part of the church. You know, I've always been a good kid. Um, you could say, I mean, my mom called me like an angel child when I was younger because, you know, I love God. I love going to church. I did all the Christmas plays. I loved it. You know, God was my everything. But as I started to get older, it, towards my middle school, high school years, you know, I mean, and people say, I mean, the older you get, the more exposed you get to the world. And that's what sort of happened to me, you know. Um, I got to middle school, and God suddenly started taking a, a back burner in things in my life. Um, first, it was girls. You know, you get to middle school, it's like, oh, I get my first kiss. You know, I get the, you know, it's the greatest thing in the world. But then I noticed, well, I put girls here. And I didn't notice at the time, but now I notice now. We put girls here, got to go in here. As I got older, you know, I get, start hanging out with the older dudes. I start seeing what that's all about. It's, you know, we go out on the weekends. We drink. We do this and that. And, well, that started to take a priority. So it was slowly, you know, girls, my friends, going out every weekend, God. What age was that? That was probably... Mm, sophomore year of high school, so probably when I was about 16 years old. Okay. You know, that's when, when I started, when I could drive is when it really took off because it was no longer, hey, mom, dad, will you drive me here and there? It was, oh, I got the keys. I'm going to say I'm going to go here, but I'm actually going here. And, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've done that until, I mean, I actually got, you know, I got caught. And that's when my parents, you know, the trust level with them started. It was like, it, you know, it used to be here, but it just slowly declined and decline, and decline, and decline. Mm -hmm. You know, there'd be times in high school, I'd stay out all night, come back, you know, two, three in the morning, my mom would just be bawling her eyes out, you know, and me, I'm not even half, you know, halfway there in my head, just because of what I've been doing that night, just bawling, you know, and I didn't care. I said, get out of my face, I'm going to bed. You're gonna sow your oats, huh? Yeah. You're gonna go out and do it. Would your dad, would your dad say something about He it? was usually, he'd be at work. Okay. He was a state trooper, so he'd work midnight shifts. Yeah. So. It was really, I mean, it was a, it was a tough situation. Um, and do I regret it now? Yes, I deeply regret it. You know, I said, it says somewhere in the Bible, you know, only a fool makes his mom cry. And I, I made her cry quite a, yeah. quite a few times. I mean, more than quite a few. Yeah. But as I, you know, as high school continued, I, uh, you know, I did sports. I did, you know, athletics. I was kind of played that jock, you know, I'm that jock dude. Uh, see you on the weekends, blah, blah, blah. And... You know, before the games, I'd always, I'd always, you know, I remember our team would get together and we'd say, you know, we pray the Lord's Prayer. And, 
you know, it's just funny because that whole day I'd be like, God, you know, be with me as I play tonight. You know, I just want you to bless my game tonight. And he would. I'd have a great game. And then, you know, Friday night, you know, he'd catch me at midnight. He'd be like, who are you? And I'm like, who are you representing here? You know, you ask me, are you a Christian? Actually, you wouldn't even ask me that question with the state of mind I'd be in. And it continued, you know, that's what I, I did it all the way through high school. And then once high school was over, you know, college came. And, you know, college is, was that part of my life where I was like, you know, when I finally get the break away from my parents, like, now, I don't. Still, you're still drinking all oh, this. Oh, I'm still, I'm still drinking. I'm, the I got, question I asked you before, too, which, which are people out there, I, I can't understand how. You started on marijuana, too, and, you, and marijuana is not strong enough when you get into tougher stuff. Is that right? I mean, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't get into tougher stuff. But you had marijuana? But I had marijuana. It was just, I mean, it's, I know high school kids out there can relate to this. If you are in the marijuana smoking, you know, it, you can get it like that. You know what I mean? You have four or five buddies that all do the same thing. You could do it every day. You know, it was bad. You know, I'd, I'd do it every day. Every day. And, you know, my grandma parents never knew. I mean, they caught on. But it's, it'd be amazed to be in high school now just to see what kids are capable of getting at an everyday expense and what they get caught up in. And like I said, that lifestyle carried over into college. You know, in college, you know, every high school kid looks forward to going to college. You know, sure, it's like, yeah. I'm breaking free. No longer do I have this curfew or, you know, my parents, where you at, where you at, where you at? It is, you know, it's my time. You know, it's what I want to do. And so high school came, I mean, high school was over, graduated, went to college. I'm up at Slippery Rock right now. And, you know, my lifestyle continued. You know, except it was more of a severe thing because in high school no longer was it just Friday and Saturday night or even just one day a week, but in college it would turn into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Where did you get the money to buy any of this stuff? Was your mother and dad supporting you in college? And uh, No, I, I would work all summer and I made like three grand and, you know, I just used that at my expense. But me, my being an idiot I was then, like the third week and into college I got in trouble when I got an underage. And I ended up, uh, well, put it like this, I ended up spending all that money for a lawyer classes, and I might have had like $500 left. So, I mean, I was kind of at the, you know. Was it a DWI or was it for drugs or what was the? It was just an underage. I was in my dorm building. I was walking out one night, me and my friend, this one girl I had up, and, uh, you know, we just hopped in a car, and, you know, we were so, like, I'm gonna be honest, we were so whacked out of it. The parking lot is no longer than 20 parking spots. His, my buddy's car is parked right here. And we each have a, a drink in our hand. And the cop car is literally standing right there with the officer in it. And we got in the car anyways. And next thing you know, like we didn't even drive. We turned, started the car, boom, lights went on. And as you can imagine, my dad ended up coming up that night. And it was bad. It was real bad. But like I said, um, um, you know, all that money I made, though, I worked my butt off. I worked 40 hours a week. I never really worked like that in my life. Gone. I had a one night. I had to pay for a lawyer, pay to get everything expunged. And so after that, my parents was very limited. You know, I didn't just go on my credit card or my debit card and I'm going to grab 50 out. And I was like, hey, mom, dad, like, I need like 15 bucks, you know. They'd be like, all right, here. But it wasn't just like I could just say, hey, I need 15 bucks. But like, what do you need it for? You know, and I'd lie to him. I'd say, I'm going to see a movie, you know, but it really was for to throw in a case of beer or something like that so I could have fun that night. And that continued, and that continued, and that continued, and I continued my whole sophomore year. You know, and at this point in time in my life, I was pretty, you know, I didn't, I didn't really realize, actually, I did realize at the time, I, my life was just so scattered, you know. I, there was a point in time I couldn't even really, I couldn't really even think for myself. It was more, I followed my friends. Whatever they did, I did. You know, it was like basically, I was just that dude that everybody kind of knew. It's like, yeah, he gets high and he drinks. So you had to be part of the crowd. So that was basically it. I didn't even, I really wasn't, I, honestly, I consider myself, I really wasn't even my own person because I didn't think for myself. It was just basically, it's like, all right, you know, I'm stoned, you know, whatever. And uh, so I, I continued my whole freshman, my whole freshman year. And it really, I mean, I looked forward to drinking and stuff on the weekends to get away from it all. You know, that was my only escape. And honestly, the thing is, the bad part about it is I don't ever remember when I escaped, you know, because oh, yeah. you drink and 
I know from your story, you can relate to me. You don't remember, sometimes it happens. And I'd always wake up the next morning just wanting to start over again. You know, like when are we gonna start up? You live from one week to another week, week to day and day, you know. Yeah. Exactly. You, you like that high. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why I talk about these alcoholics I work with, you know. Yeah. Some guy said, well, I only go to the bar and drink five or six beers. I said, well, why don't you drink five or six Cokes? Yeah. And I'm talking to somebody out there with the alcohol problem, in my age or your age or your kid, you know. Yeah. You drink to get high. Yeah. And you, you become a different person. Maybe yeah. two drinks a night, but four or five. But don't tell me you go out at six o'clock at night, and, and which we did till 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Somewhere your personality is going to change. Yeah. Some, some get happy, some get mad, some want to fight. Yeah. And, and, and so you, you've been through it, right? Yeah. How did, how did Slippery Rock get, how would maybe Slippery Rock find out they would kick you out of it or something? Was you able to cover that pretty good at college? You mean the partying wise? Yes. Oh, college is college. They all do it, huh? Everybody does it. Okay. Yeah, you're in college. Yeah. You know, it's just now that I'm a part of a, a Christian organization out there, you're like picking a needle out of a haystack. You know, and I'm not a dog. I'm not, you know, looking down at other people out there because I used to be, you know, I used to be the first one to say, let's go do this. But it's the college lifestyle. At any college, it is like that. But the question I'm going to ask you, which are people are going to say, you knew really what you were doing. I mean, I know you maybe got to a place where you didn't care, you were in, in, in no no land, right? Yeah. But you knew it was wrong. Oh, yeah. Because of your childhood, breaking whatever brought up, right? Yeah. But it just got the fact now you're full of sin. Yeah. And, and the sin is fun, but the wages of sin is death. Yes. And that didn't bother you at all, you know, until we go ahead, until you finally, when we come to how, how you really got to change life. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, like you said, uh, wait, you said something. Oh, like death. The wages of sin is death. That never really hit me. And then it was till my second, second till, till this point in my life, like I said, I continued that lifestyle to my first semester of freshman year of college, all the way through winter break. And I got back to school, still continued my second semester. And it wasn't until Easter um, last year, 2013, when I don't know what it was, you know, I went in and you know, I, I, something really touched me. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, this is, this is good. You know, it was a peace. You know, I was like, this is where I feel, I feel good at. Was and somebody witnessing to you or were no, you going to church? Just, just... It, it was early at church, Easter Sunday church. And that week at school, I, you know, something changed about me. I, I, didn't, I didn't really carry myself the way I, I used to. You know, I could see in a matter, it was amazing. And it, like, you know, that Sunday I was like, you know what? Like, I'm really going to start turning things around. You know, I'm going to really start following God. And, you know, I did it gradually, you know, that week. But the thing is, the slightest little things I did, you know, I could see there was a, a change. You know, from what I was that week before, there was I, I like a pretty dramatic change in my life. It was a, a, a piece, you know, like my life wasn't all over the place like it was. But then that Friday, you know, the weekend came again and a few of my buddies from home texted me and they said, hey, man, uh, um, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing tonight? And I said, uh, I don't know yet. And, you know, I'm probably just going to hang out tonight. And you know how your friends are like, well, we're going to come up. And I was like, all right, you know what, come on up. You know, I, and I was probably in, the, in the pit of my stomach, you know how sometimes, you know, this is a bad decision. Well, it was like, there was like God, you know, I could feel God tugging at me saying, you know, Josh, you see what's happened this week. You see the turnaround, you know, you see what I'm, I'm showing you right now. And you're just going to do this. You know, you're going to decide to go back out tonight, start drinking, get whacked, and, and you know, repeat. And it was that Friday, literally this all happened to Friday. And I, you know, I just was like, all right, you know what, I'm going to go out tonight. And like that, that tugging started to happen. And as that day continued, you know, I went down to the basketball place. I played some basketball with my buddies. And then uh, we went to lift. And we went to go lift. I was lifting with my two friends, my good friends of mine. And I started, you know, I started listening to my secular music again. I started my, you know, my sailor's mouth again. And we're lifting and we're doing a, a bench press machine, you know, where you lay back, you, you push up like this. And we were, you know, we were probably like about midway through our workout. And I was going up and I pushed up one time and it was like a, like a, like a pop in my chest. And I, you know, at first I was just like, well, you know, what was that? You know, I could like feel like right here. And so I just kind of laid back down and I started to push up on it again and I, and I couldn't do it. You know, I tried as, as hard as I could and I couldn't do it. And immediately, as soon as that happened, I, you know, when something's wrong, you want to know what's wrong, but you don't know. You, you don't know. Well, I just wanted to, it was like a panic. It wasn't like a, a, like a crazy panic. It was more of a, 
was very subtle panic. Like I stood up, my friends were just standing there, and I just started to walk away from them. It was a fear. It well, I, I, I couldn't even tell you. I believe this day my pastor told me he was like, you know, I, I believe that God removed grace from your life. You a know, warning, that, a warning. Yeah, a warning saying like, this is what life is like without me, you know. And it was like, please, I can't, I can't describe to you what death is like, but I believe that's what I experienced. And you know, people, you know, people might say, you know, whatever does, you know, that's my nickname, but you're crazy, you know. But I'll tell you what, and I don't mean to, I'm not coming at people for this, but I mean, it's a, it's a very scary feeling. You know, I, I, I seriously feel like I was, I started to walk and I'm like talking, I'm like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I, it was like, my body was getting sucked through the floor. And I went over to get a drink. I was like, I must be dehydrating, you know, like I feel so heavy. And I'm at the water fountain. And as I'm bending down and I'm taking a drink is when panic started to set in. Like I am panicking, I'm losing it. And immediately I was, I thought about hell. And I'm thinking, oh no, you know, like I'm gonna die. And I was like, and I'm going to hell. And so as I'm walking through this gym of, you know, a bunch of 19 to 25 year olds, I start crying. And I start, and I, I, I start talking, like, I'm just like, God, I'm walking around with my head, like, kind of like a zombie, like a zombie, just arms like this, like, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I lived. I'm sorry for the things I've done. Lord, forgive me. You know, it's amazing that the way I lived, you know, and here I am, this, you know, 19-year-old, you know, I'm not going to, you know, pretty big guy, bawling his eyes out in a bunch of, in front of a bunch so the of Holy him. Spirit was working on you. It, it must have been. Yeah. How, how did you get involved in, in, in one minute here? How did you get involved in going to a church where you said you made a final commitment down there in industry PA? How did you get saved down there at that church you told me? Oh, uh, just, oh. How did you get into that church? Did you, did your mother and oh, dad? Oh, yeah, that's what my mom. Your mother and dad yeah, around that that's area? That's where I always went to. And so you went down that area because our time's running out. Oh. And then what happened? Oh, yeah. uh, what, after I yeah. got saved? Yeah, no, uh, what happened? You get down to, to the, the, the church there, I think it was the... Uh, assembly, uh, Christian assembly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and did you get saved in that church then? Yes, I got saved. What happened? Did, did something drew you in? We went in there, and then what happened? Well, I went up to the lady, and my pastor Bill, he, he said, he's like, uh, you know, if you'd like to rededicate your life to Christ, come on up. And so I went up, and this lady, real nice lady, his name is Mrs. McNary, and, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm still very fragile, like, uh, but besides the point. I went up, and I'm just like, trying anything to just get God to accept me. Because, you know, I was losing it. You know, I'd face death, and I'm just freaking out. And she, like, touched my heart, and she said, God knows your heart. And I said, wow. I was like, you said the words. I couldn't even, you know. I was like, that's what I needed to hear. And at that moment, I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is the moment where I, you know, rededicate my You're life. born again. And really born again. Really born again. Yeah. With your mother and father there? Yeah, they were there. Wouldn't they're, they're the same tears that your mother and dad shed because of your situation, right? Yeah. Oh, it's just amazing how, yeah. you know, the, 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 uh, the train up a child in the way of the Lord, it might take a while. Yeah. But it doesn't come out, you know. Because of our time running out here, you know, when you went into that church, mm -hmm. you can very well see from the time Slippery Rock that God was drawing you back to your childhood because you said you were weeping, right? Yeah. And crying, right? Mm -hmm. So you knew that from your childhood, I, I, I emphasize this for pastors that are doing the preaching, right? Yeah. That you, you, I put it this way, you probably like me, you got sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You said there's got to be better life than yeah. this, right? Yeah. And the Lord brought you down to that church and we had a pastor there to preach it born again mm -hmm. and you got an altar. That's, you know, that... I, I, I love to hear a testimony of a young one like that, see, because yeah. you can touch a, a, a more people out there yeah. than in your age today because mm -hmm. they think marijuana is nothing wrong with it. Now these states are, people are moving from one state to another so they can buy marijuana. Can yeah. you imagine? That's the, that's the society of today. Yeah. You know, I want to get back and continue on in a minute, but <clears throat> we're going to go to a song here, okay? Because you know what? Many a times you go down the road and you're going wrong, yeah. but God is still with you. Yes, and here you got your parents back here praying for you. Yeah. And you know, someone touched you. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now we're going to go to the song, and it's sing by Olive Lippman from Newcastle, PA. It's song is, He Touched Me, and we'll be right back.
You're listening today to, to Josh Desmond from down around uh, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. He's a college student. Now, you just mentioned something. Are you involved in a college Christian, part of a Christian something up in the college now? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, actually, it's called Crew uh, Campus Crusade for Christ. It's, uh, it's a big outreach uh, ministry we have on our campus. It's actually nationwide. It's really cool. I, like, I like, really like being a part of it. And uh, if some young girl, guy, or whatever wanted you to speak in their church, you would do that, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. Let me say something. I think you're like a lot of children, too, that their parents have been praying for them. Yeah. And they prayed for me, and they prayed for my wife, and some people didn't go through what uh, you and I went through, right? But I believe that when you said the desire, I want to go back to the word, it, all of a sudden the desire mm -hmm. went away, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was, uh, did, have you taken any, when you made that commitment down at the church, you haven't touched it since? Oh, no. And, and you have no desire? No desire. You see, that's the way I pray in the ministry. A lot of people tell me, come to me with alcohol, whatever problems, yeah. kids in Florida, and, and they say, I'm going to quit drinking, I'm going to quit. I said, I ain't going to pray. To, don't quit. Don't try quitting. Yeah. See, the more you try to quit, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to pray the biblical way. I'm going to pray that God takes the desire yeah. away. Oh, See, yeah. there's a difference, mm -hmm. you know, because the more you try to quit something, yeah. the more apt you're going to do. It. Now, you're born again and saved, and, you're, and you know you're saved. How about your friends? Did you lose them like I did? Yeah. What happened? I, I, it, it was nothing dramatic, you know. I mean, it's just basically instead of hitting them up every day to do whatever, it's just, I mean, you don't talk to them anymore. Not saying when I see them, I don't say hi because yeah. they're still my friends, but it's, we just don't hang out like we used to. You know, and mm, I mean, I can't complain that, you know, because ever since that day, I mean, my life's been more blessed. And what date was that? What date? Yeah, was that? Oh, I can't even tell you. About a year ago, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, yeah, a little under a year ago. It was the Friday right after Easter Sunday. Right after Easter Sunday. So whatever that date that is, I'm going to remember that. I yeah, look it yeah, up. yeah. yeah. Well, I can see the smile on your face yeah. now, you know. Yeah. So you can do like me and a lot of people. You can walk right by a bar. Mm -hmm. You can go the parting that they want you to do, right? Yep. And you can walk away now. Mm -hmm. And you got filled with the Holy Spirit. Yep. And with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yep. And that power as well, you know, and you're saved whether you speak in tongues or not. We want to emphasize it yeah. on this ministry here, okay? Because God has additional power. Yeah. You know, Time runs so fast, and I'm so I, I'm excited when I get a 20-year-old young, good-looking guy on there, and I'm quite younger than me, but anyway, four times 20 is 80, whatever. Uh, I love to, I just love to see this when he shares his testimony. I, I asked him to be on TV. He said, "Sure," just like that, and that's the way it should be with everybody. I know sometimes you were a little bashful, and this, and that. I understand, okay? But here's the thing: no matter how you look at it, God can forgive you for what you've done. He forgives you, and he, I want to tell you something. He'll forgive you for the past, he'll be with the current and the future. That's what he, this young man did uh, uh, so, like a year ago, and now he's on television. And sometimes we think we have to quit doing this or quit doing that. No, you let the Holy Spirit come into you. He'll do the changing in you. And the most important thing is to bring up this Bible, is to get the Bible and read it. Even if you buy one you can't, it's easier to read than this. Get it. And if you want a Bible out there, we will, this ministry will send you one, no charge at all. Because we are crossing paths, we have people supporting us now that we're on television on Cornerstone, and we're looking for people out there who would just buy one show, which is $500 a show, so that we can continue on the rest of the year. We already had 15 people stepped up and gave my wife and I a check for $500. So if you're one of them people out there, we appreciate it. Now there's a telephone number on the screen. It's 724-981-7777. Remember, that's easy to remember. And internationally, it's 855-981-9777. There's a nine in there. And God gave me them, um, years ago, he gave me that. You can watch every one of our programs on the internet, crossingpass.org. And you can pick, go on the internet and you can just pick any program you want. Now I'm asking you, once you make that commitment today, ask them to come into your life. There's no set prayer. Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want to be saved. And he'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Don't forget, 
People are standing down by right now to talk to you. We have girls and guys that will answer this phone. They are there 24 hours a day, and we do one thing at all. All we want to do is tell you how to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please, I beg you from the bottom of my heart. I did that 39 years ago. I put, put down the, the bottle and picked up the Bible, and God saved me. Don't forget, God loves you, we love you, and no sin is too bad that the Jesus Christ on the cross cannot do and forgive. Take it away. God bless you. Crossing paths together, working hand in hand. Good to see your brother take a stronger stand. Crossing paths together on the day we're sure to stand.